Hi everyone, I'm Fiona from Rooted and today Isabella and I are going to show you how to make Kokodama. Kokodama is basically a plant with its roots wrapped in a moss ball. Kokodama translates to moss ball. So yes, I've got um, bored, fed up, always hungry children so I roped Jessie in, she's doing the filming for me and Isabella roped in to help me to show you that it's child's play. So what we need to make a kokodama is a plant, obviously, and then we've got these clay granules. I think they're like pond. I haven't ever actually used pond, but I think pond is a clay granule that is more commonly available. And we have compost. We've got our moss for wrapping around our earth ball string to tie it in on water. So sleeves rolled up and ready to go. <laughs> so we'll swap afterwards. What you need is two handfuls, double handfuls of your compost. So if you scoop that into your bowl. And you need one double handful of your clay granules. Your hands might be smaller or larger and you'll just have a smaller ball if you've got smaller hands, basically. So we'll swap. So you take one double-handed scoop and I'm going to take two of this. Okay, and we'll just move these out of the way. And then, I'm going to just mix it all up a little bit before we add the water. This is actually houseplant compost that I've used. I normally use just good quality garden compost, um, but I don't have any right now. So hopefully this will work as well. It's a bit more aerated, so it might not hold together as well. Um, and then the clay is to keep water in your bowl so that it doesn't dry out so quickly. So the clay absorbs the water, and so that's why we use the clay. And it also helps to bind the ball. So we're gonna add some water. So I'll maybe add that much. Maybe don't use all of that water. Start with less and you can always add more. <laughs> and then we're mixing it in. Fairly wet but not sodden consistency. So we're just going to leave it for a few minutes to let the clay absorb some water. Yours still looks a bit dry so I might add a little bit more water Isabella. Okay. Much? Maybe a little bit more. You can always okay. squeeze out extra. Okay mix, mix, mix. So yes, you're going to get your hands dirty but usually bad compost is um, sterile. And they sterilise it to get rid of weed seeds and bugs and so on. So you're, you're safe enough to use it with your hands. Um, but I wouldn't work in the garden um, with bare hands. I always use gloves. But it's nice to feel the earth and your fingernails. <laughs> That's why I never bother doing my nails, because they're always dirty. Okay, let's feel that. Yeah, I think you can still add a little bit more water there. For small hands, you've managed to get a lot in there, I have to say. Uh, you should have probably taken your little bracelet off, it's going to get mucky. That's fine. So, um, while we're waiting for the clay to absorb the water, um, Jessie's getting very excited and pointing point at her puppy. Are you wanting to show everyone our puppy? I'm a show everyone our puppy. <laughs> I'll show you. Um, at the end when I've washed all the dirt off my hands. Uh, yes, Isabella had a haircut before Christmas. Um, she used to have very long hair and then she shaved it off to raise money for cancer research. And we had announced a date that we we're going to do it, but we weren't quite ready when that date came. So we had to borrow our neighbor's horse clipping shears <laughs> to cut her hair. So, and Jessie um, cut her hair with great delight um, but it ended up a slightly choppy look and now she's struggling with it growing in 
upwards <laughs> but it grows fast so anyway back to what we're doing here oh i'm just gonna move that out of the way so it doesn't get dirty okay jesse you need to zoom in sometimes all right to what we're doing here <laughs> jesse's like no this is so boring why am i here <laughs> so gather up some soil in your hand and make a ball with it and squeeze out excess soil not soil water and then get a bit more and add it to it and squeeze and we're going to keep doing that until we've got a fair sized ball let's squeeze quite hard to get rid of the excess water it's a bit like making a snowball it's easier to start with a small ball and then kind of add to it Unfortunately, I don't have, here's one we made earlier to show you. I did have one, but um, I haven't taken very good care of it, so it was looking a little bit sad and pathetic, and I was just far too embarrassed <laughs> to show it to you. So we'll show you the ones that we actually make. How are you getting on there, Izzy? Good, yeah, you're doing well. Good squeezing action going on there. So girls, are you looking forward to going back to school? Yeah. Are you, Jessie? <laughs> you can talk, Jessie. <laughs> I'm looking forward to them going back to school because I can't get on with anything. Not so much the girls, because they tend to lie around in their rooms all day, but Finley, he's always coming downstairs looking for food, what's to eat, what's to eat. <laughs> he's always hungry. Um, so at least we will get lunch. Right, I think it's getting difficult to make it bigger than this. It's about as big as my hands can cope with. It might look quite small, but there's earth on the moss as well. Let's see yours. Yeah, you've done a good job there, Isabella. Mine's a bit wet, I can't actually really get any more as well. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Give her one last squeeze. And hopefully it will all hold together. There's a few bits dropping off. So we just gently set our moss ball to one side. Okay. And then we pick up our plants. So Isabella has a beautiful asplenium. So oh, we could have a towel to tidy up her hands a bit. Never mind. Okay, so if you squeeze around the side of the pot just to release it a little bit. And then lift the plant out of the pot. Yes, this is, I think it's a Splenium Osaka, um, a bird's nest fern. If you zoom in, Jesse, um, you'll see it's kind of got quite a waxy leaf. Um, so it's quite good at conserving water. So it is an easier fern to have. I'm very fond of these ferns because um, I don't do well with ferns that need lots of watering, which they often do. So, and I have got. A spider plant, and it's got these round tip edges as spider plants often do have. There is a theory that they're very sensitive to the salts in water, and that's why they get the brown tips. And if you use rainwater or boiled cold water um, and the salts evaporate out of it, and um, you won't get these tips. So I'm actually doing an experiment and I'm watering one with rainwater and one with tap water and um, but I just think they get brown tips because it's a long way for the water to travel and um, I just haven't been very consistent with my watering that it lives on so I'm going to squeeze my pot that's a good way kind of to release them let's see the root ball on yours hold it up it's quite a young plant so it has yeah it's got some fibrous roots around the edges there um, Oh, my roots, I think, are stuck in the bottom a bit. Oh, look. <laughs> now, that's a plant that wants potting up. You can see it's got great roots. And it's holding all the soil together well. That's a sign when a plant needs potting up. If, it, if the roots are almost knitting the soil together so that soil doesn't fall away when you pull it out of the pot. Same with yours. The soil didn't fall away. But I wouldn't have said yours was quite ready for potting up. So we're going to strip some soil off 
here. And I am actually going to split my plant. So there's actually three little plants in here. So I'm just grabbing the soil, the root, the root and the soil, and just pulling apart. You can't do this gently. You have to be quite tough. Uh, there we go. I've got one. <laughs> it's making quite a mess. Um, shall I use this one? I might use this one, or I might use a smaller one. Because um, this, I've got a lot of the roots in this one so I'll pop this one up later um, and I'll maybe use a smaller one here. They've still got good roots. Look at that, look at that. Nice healthy roots. So um, I think I'll go for this one because it's still got a little bit more to it. Stuck from the top as well there. Be vigorous Isabella, don't be afraid. <laughs> Holes. I like the shape of these two plants because they're narrow there and then they cascade out and I think that balances very beautifully with the moss ball. Um, some people do kokodama using succulents um, but succulents prefer free draining soil um, so they wouldn't like the clay holding onto the water and you might find that they're quite short-lived, their roots might um, rot, so you can make cute little um, succulent kokodama, but um, I think tropical plants tend to be better. Okay, so we've stripped off the soil, are you almost there? Uh -huh. And we've made quite a mess. <laughs> um, Do you think that's enough? Let's have a look. Mm, you've still got quite a lot there. I'm just going to show everyone the new frond. Can you zoom in, Jessie? See, there's a cute little head of a little frond there and a little unfurling frond, and the fronds are usually a brighter green, but this fern is a lovely bright green anyway. I'm just going to do this quickly for speed <laughs> so we don't bore anyone watching. So we've still got good root structure there. And we'll pop that in your pot and we'll set these to the side. So, what we're going to do now is probably the most difficult part and to allow it to be child's play. Mud pie making for adults, as I like to say. So we're holding the earth in our hands and pressing down with our thumbs, we're going to pull apart and hopefully Get a nice, not too bad. <laughs> this side's a bit big, that side's a bit small. Oh, now look at that. Isabella has done it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Star pupil, better than the teacher. <laughs> so, um, then I'm just gonna put down one half, the lace crumbly half. We get our plant and we put the top of the roots, the base of the stem, in line with the top of the, the ball. And just lay it down like that, hold it all together. You probably will get some roots sticking out, don't worry too much about that. We're going to be wrapping them up in the moss. Get your other half. You've got a lot of roots, so this is going to be hard for you, Isabella. And put it back together again. And then just try and squeeze it all together to make your nice sphere. Who used to struggle saying sphere? Remember? Was it you? Yeah. Sphere. Can you say it now? Uh, sphere. sphere. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we just wanted to hold together again. So some people might say, why do you bother making the ball first of all? Um, you tend to get, rather than just shoving earth around the roots, 
it's kind of easier to get it all back together and you tend to get a nicer round shape when you make your ball first and you just split it in half. You need to work on the sides to try and get them sort of joining a little bit. I think mine might hold together. How about yours? Are you still the star pupil? Oh, there's a one. Is there? Yeah. Oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> yes, so we've got a little worm doing good things to our soil. Worm cast is very popular to use when potting out plants. So I'll just pop you there, little worm. <laughs> okay, is it holding together or is it going to fall apart? Um, yeah, Mine might fall together. apart. <laughs> Right, I think it's going to stay as one whole, so we're just putting, putting it down. We'll move this jug out of the way as well. And then we've got our moss. So you can get these from florists or you can ask me to get them. It's sustainable moss and we're not encouraged to go out foraging for moss um, as it's a limited resource. But if you've got some in your garden wall, you can just scrape it off. But if you do get it from your garden wall, Check carefully for beasties. I wash my moss just to get rid of beasties. Uh, look for little eggs. They're kind of white, translucent-y white. So they're quite easy to see because you don't want little buggies hatching. Um, and I also wet my moss um, because it helps it to stick to the, the earth ball. So we lay it down. Mine's slightly split. You've got the nice, I give you the nice bit. Thank you. <laughs> And we're going to see if I can make this sit a bit better. We're going to lift up our moss ball carefully and place it on our moss. Just get that out of the shot as well. And it's a bit like wrapping a Christmas present. If you have too much, then you get it overlapping. So you don't want overlapping if you can help it. So I'll have excess, you can see on this side here. So I'm just gathering it round. And I'm gonna get rid of some excess. You've also got a little bit of excess you'll need to tear off there, is it? Yeah. That's gonna be extra. And don't worry. We will release the excess into the wild. <laughs> so I think I've got mine pretty well covered. So I'm just pressing it on. Just a bit of extra length there. This this uh, spider flat foliage is kind of getting in the way a little bit. So just pressing it on firmly so it kind of sticks a little bit. Okay. Right. Oof, leaves are falling down. Next step. You've got quite a lot of sort of earthy stuff sticking out the top. Yeah. And moss has quite a lot of earth, so we'll just peel off a little bit of that. We'll tidy it up a bit more afterwards anyway. Okay, so grab your string. I use a kind of greeny colour. I did have a nicer, not nicer, but a more moss coloured string. Um, but do I have any left? Yeah, so that, that matches a little bit better, uh, but I don't think I've got enough, so I'm just using the dark green. I've seen some people use string to great effect. Um, for example, someone did a Kokodama with a wandering sailor, which has that beautiful purple under leaves, and they use purple string. <laughs> um, so it looked really nice. Jessie, what's funny? <laughs> Jessie's in a fit of giggles. Oh, it's very distracting. <laughs> okay, so we're taking our string and we're going to kind of put it around near the top we've got one short end and we just do a knot a granny knot we don't want to let it tight so far and we choke the plant but we we don't want it coming undone either So it's kind of loose at the top and just do any granny knot or 
reef knot or whatever. If you were a girl guide or sky to reef knot. <laughs> um, and then, this is slightly tricky because you've got to try and hold the ball in one hand without the moss. So you can tip it to the side. <coughs> Good. And then pull down quite firmly and go underneath and round and up. Actually, the spider plan is slightly tricky to do because the foliage keeps getting in the way. Your plan's a bit easier to do so. And then just rotate it, keep rotating it so that you're going around e evenly until you get the string holding the moss on. And do pull down quite firmly. Ah, some moss is coming loose. Let me get that string done quickly. So depending on the plant, this can be quite a fast operation. A more upright plant will be trying to pull a bit tighter when you're pulling down. And keep going, you want a well wrapped around. Your job is not yet done. So yeah, pull as firmly as possible. So this is like a little cocoon for our plants and they'll be very happy in here. Try and make sure you've got even distribution all over it. I've seen some people do beautifully wrapped um, kokodava balls where the strings are, are wonderfully even and um, I've never really mastered. If you rotate it, you know, every time you put it under, you should get a nice distribution. But I think some people have done little macrame balls. Jesse, just speak. John driving up the road. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. I just thought because the dogs might bark. Okay, the dogs might bark. Apparently, someone's coming up the road. <laughs> oh dear. So, do you think you're done? Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe a couple more up there. Because you don't want any bits falling loose, do you? Jessie's trying to maintain my professionality. <laughs> but I'm not that newsreader. I'm sure you've all seen that clip of the, was it a BBC newsreader? Um, and one of his children escaped <gasps> into the room and the nanny was like on her knees, desperately trying to grab him and get him out. That was so funny. But um, yeah, I'm not so important. <laughs> uh, right, I think that's done. I've kind of snapped a leaf while doing this. Oh dear. But new leaves will grow, it's okay. So, we're going to neaten them off a little bit, um, but we've got to secure the string. So what you want to decide now is whether you're going to have it, oh, you don't have to decide now, you can always attach string. Um, so, you can use a string by threading it through at the top as your hanging thing. I like them to hang slightly lopsided, so I just tend to do one, but if you want, a more symmetrical sort of hang, you can do two like this, or you can just secure this bit of string and use fishing line so that it looks like it's hanging invisibly. That's quite effective as well. So I'm going to cut mine, make it a bit longer because you can't make it longer once you cut it. There, okay. And then we're going to just thread it through one of the strings at the top. So 
so it should be able to hang. So it gives a little jaunty angle there, but if you don't like that, just tie it over on the other side. I'm going for the jaunty angle. And then you're just going to do a little bit of kneading off here, because when you put it down, you end up with a flat bottom, and we want to have quite a nice clean crown, so I kind of push away from my foliage, push the moss down a bit, so it's like nice clean wind there, so that there's a crisp division between the plant and the moss ball, and then I'm just going to shape it a little bit. So it's less of a flat bottom and more of an elegant rounded shape. Yeah, let's see, zoom in on Isabella's flat bottom. <laughs> yes, we don't want flat bottoms, we want nice curved rounded bottoms. So I think I'm happy with my shape. Now, I did damage a few leaves, but as I said, new leaves will, will grow, so it'll look better. And just imagine it with lots of little babies cascading off. Um, so that's it. Um, Isabel is, is looking very good, look at that. That's a lovely, elegant creation. <laughs> so we're just gonna, I'm gonna just trim off some brown edges of my spider plant. Not too many, actually. Oh, no, actually, the more I look, Okay, Izzy's going to wash her hands. Won't do the plant any harm, trimming off your brown edges. Let's have a look. How does that look? So, just to tell you how to look after it. It feels heavy right now because the soil's wet, so if it's hanging, you can just feel your ball and Light means it needs water, heavy means it's holding water. So then you just take a bowl of water, sit it in the water, and let it soak up the water. And you can also put a bit of plant food in every now and then through the growing season, spring to autumn, and to feed your plants, so it'll soak up the dilute fertilizer. Um, and then before you hang it up again, just give it a squeeze to make sure it's not dripping water anymore. Oh, someone's stealing the show here. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so basically dampen water um, when this, the ball is feeling light um, and make sure it's not dripping water onto your precious wood surfaces or just keep it sat on the dish. And that is the art of Kokodama. And this is Pepper. <laughs> so thanks for watching and have a go making your own.